One of our next guests said this is going to be the most serious interview you have ever seen. Mm. These three uh, have been very good friends of our show here. Uh, they have joined us in the past to chat about their first book. That was almost two years ago. Um, their real and sometimes funny take on their own experiences with racism sent their work to the bestsellers list. And now these three sisters are back with a brand new book, a collection of hilarious intergenerational anecdotes <laughs> about their family's daily experiences with racist events titled the world record book of racist <laughs> stories please welcome our friends reverend angela t Cabeb, new times new york times best-selling authors lacy and lamar lacy lamar and host of the amber ruffin show amber ruffin thank you all for being with us all right so uh, for those who maybe don't know about the first installment tell us what this book is about what you're what you're hoping to achieve with this book right one day we realized that uh, Lacey, uh, my sister who lives in Omaha, Nebraska, had a treasure trove of hilarious <laughs> mm. racist stories, so we decided to put it in a book. That first book was, You'll Never Believe What Happened to Lacey, Crazy Stories About Racism, and that made the New York Times bestseller list. So as after we wrote the book and we press send, R racist stuff kept happening to Lacey. <laughs> so we, we had more than enough, plus the things that didn't make it into the first book, we had more than enough for a second book, so we just dove in. I help people understand, you, just by you saying racist stuff kept happening, and then the three of y'all cracked up. Now people will hear, see that and say, wait a minute, racism ain't funny, Lacey. Racism is not funny. <laughs> But the things that were happening, and plus we are just a funny bunch of people. Uh -huh. it's, like, it's better to laugh than to cry. Um, you know, when I say when, when someone thinks you look like Harriet Tubman, it's you hilarious. know, you, you kind of got to giggle at it sometimes. <laughs> and, 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 and Reverend, you all then added your own personal It wasn't just happening to Lacey. Right. It was happening to all of you. So talk a little bit about what you added to the mix. There were, I have my own section. I like to call it Holy Racism Batman. Because oh. <laughs> it happens in the church all the time. One of the funniest stories, I was living in a small town in Ohio and a parishioner died who was no longer living in that city. So I didn't know the family. And once the family found out that a black woman pastor was uh, pastoring that church, they didn't want me to bury him. And I was like, now, y'all know he's still going to be dead if a white man buries him. But, you know, it's just, it's too, it's hilarious. It's just, it's hilarious. But did you all, you growing up, I mean, did your, your, your family members, your older family members, your parents, did they, they, I mean, they give you, your kids lessons about racism, but the specifics and some of these anecdotes like you all are sharing, did you all hear those kinds of stories coming up? Yes, when you come home from work, and something, or school, and something racist has happened, you come home in a different way, right? You come home and you bust open the door and you go, you guys, gather around, you're <laughs> never gonna believe it, you know? And I'll be like, my boss mistook me for the lady who's worked here for 14 years, you know? <laughs> it's always something very fun and funny, but you tend to laugh because a lot of uh, people think of racism as, as like big, scary events that are happening in one moment in time, uh -huh. but it's a lot of tiny events that happen daily forever. <laughs> and, so, I mean, it's remarkable you're dealing with it in a humorous way because it is so ridiculous at yeah. some points that you kind of have to laugh, but <laughs> there have to be takeaways here. I mean, most of these people who were saying and doing racist things to you, would you say they didn't even know that they were racist or they were being racist or they did it deliberately, <laughs> uneducated or deliberate? <laughs> Both. Some yeah, of them yeah. are like, I'm, I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm going to get away with this. No, right. Yeah, who cares? Right. You I know, I am right. HR, so who's going to check me? Mm -hmm. So, yes, some people definitely knew that they were being racist. A parishioner came up to me once and said, I know this is a microaggression, oh, God. but I just want to touch your hair. And she put both oh. of her hands running through my hair, and then I just turned to walk away, and she walked back around, and she said, see, that wasn't so painful, now was it? Ooh. She circled yes, she back. Did. Yes, she did. She knew it was wrong, well, it was right. and it would inflict yeah. pain, but she did it anyway. Well, what do you say to somebody like that? You, you talk about you walked away, but we can sit here, we, we laugh about some of these experiences, but these experiences also that we have all had are painful and frustrating. So how do you, and how would you recommend someone handle themselves in a situation One like that? One thing is good to have a, an answer ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't prepared for that one. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. But you know what? In our family, we get our humor very honest because our mom, when she graduated from high school, she was voted most humorous. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we get yeah. it honest. 
You say it's a, it's a mix between 50-50 silly, scary? That's what's in yeah, here? Yeah, 50-50 silly, serious stories, yes. Because uh, Lacey and I are goofuses. And the reason we have funny stories is because Lacey wrote them down, right? But the funny right. stories don't necessarily stick with you. So we would ask, we asked mom and dad, and their versions of <laughs> racist stories were quite heavy, right? Like, I remember mom said when she was a young child in the store, they would have to go to the store, and also, uh, um, not a child child, but as a teenager, they would have to wait for all of the white people to be checked out before they could purchase anything. Mm -hmm. Even though they were in front of the white people, the white people would step into line, see a black person, and step mm -hmm. in front of you. I, 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 that blew my mind. I had no idea that that was a thing. Is this a better way to go about it? I mean, well, there are different ways we can all do better when it comes to race relations, racism. But is humor not injected enough into the conversations and trying to bridge some divides that we do have? Is this something, I mean, this is just unique to you all. You all found something, but is this it's, something we need to inject into this conversation? It's just one of the ways. Yeah. There's a million different ways. And we definitely do not handle everything with humor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just had new neighbors. I, I, I'm a new to my neighborhood, and the neighbors I knew it was going to happen just called the police on me. That was not oh. funny. So there are a million different ways you can handle him, and we talk about that. You can handle it with whatever ways it's going to keep you safe. Um, that's going to get that point across. So we are definitely not telling America laugh at all racism. That's definitely not it. It's just one way. This but when something maybe. racist happens too lacy, you can laugh at that. <laughs> and that just goes for everybody. <laughs> but but your, your heart kind of drops yeah. to hear that. It's, yeah. it, when mm -hmm. did this just happen to you? When did this happen? You said your neighborhood? How long A few months ago. A few months ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How was that resolved, that whole situation? Um, it, um, they, they did come over later, and there was a couple of tears. And okay. I was like, mm. And you know what? She was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know, of the bunch, who, who's the one that needs to calm down the most when you all get everybody on the phone and you have that little meeting with the tribunal? Who, who is the one that needs to be, is that you? That needs to calm down? To calm down the most. Who, who can take, like somebody could take it with more laughter, but which one is always the one like, oh, oh don't do that. Don't go outside. It's not funny. Yes, who, which one of you is the... Oh, whoever it happened to. Yeah, oh, that's okay. my... Yeah, yeah. whoever it happened to okay. is the angriest yeah. one. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. The book is the world record book of racist stories available today. Everywhere books are sold. And be sure to catch the Christmas episode of the Amber Ruffin Show. Yay. It's streaming Yay. on Peacock, December 16th. We got all that right? Yeah, that's true. Yay. All right. It's all right, ladies. So good to have you all. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.